If Putin likes Donald Trump, guess what, folks? That's called an asset, not a liability. That was President-elect Donald Trump talking about Russian President Putin and his hopes for a better relationship with him and with Russia. Others on Capitol Hill are worried about just how much Putin liked Trump's and what that might have meant during the election. The panel's back with me, and Senator Santorum, I rudely cut you off. I want you to respond. Mayor Morial was talking about how well President Obama took the, the slings and arrows when he was president. You take issue. Yeah, I take big issue because President Obama was probably one of the most vindictive presidents that we've ever dealt with in going after individual members of Congress and anybody who disagreed with him. And, and that was one of his hallmarks. One of the things that made it hard for him, I'll be honest, hard for him to get things done was going after Paul Ryan while Paul Ryan is sitting right in front of him and, and, and trying to embarrass him. On Medicare. After, that was a Medicare. Yeah, on Medicare and going after the Supreme Court during the State of the Union address where the Supreme Court is trying to bully the Supreme Court. This president has been a bully. This president has been tough. Now, he's done it in a cool way. I'll give you that. He, the guy has style, but it's not because he, he he's been he's been light-handed or he's been a he's been a soft touch. He's been a very tough touch. He's been a and, tough, strong leader, and he but okay. he's done it with dignity. And I think what we expect is presidents to be presidential style. And now you're talking about it's style. It's not just style. It is style. It's comporting a sense of leadership and a sense of confidence in what we want our children to be. The presidency is an also an important role model and an important image. And I don't want my children believing that leaders speak in coarse language, that leaders personally attack anyone that says anything about them, like they're on the schoolyard playground. So I sort of think we just have to get used to these sort of this tweeting. But, you know, let me say this. You learn this. When you, as a high-powered person, attack someone, you also elevate them. John McCain was elevated uh, when Donald Trump attacked him. John Lewis is elevated when Donald Trump attacks him because they're elevated in the public consciousness because people don't really expect a president to do that. I'd like us to certainly pivot as a country and move to confronting some of the challenges we face. If there's going to be a, a plan coming from this administration for America's urban communities, I'm all ears. Yeah, so let's, but, let's turn back to the subject that this was about that you said we shouldn't avoid, which was Russia uh, and the hacks of Russia. Uh, and now the Senate Intelligence Committee is saying that they are going to look into uh, uh, the, the role of Russia and also any intelligence regarding links between Russia and individuals associated uh, with uh, political uh, campaigns. What well, do you they, make of they this? They have to do that, Jake, and they have to reassure the American people that we will be protected, not just from Russia, from China. We need the private sector to be engaged because we know Sony got hacked, you know, a, a couple of years ago. This is a big deal. This is a security issue, both from the public perspective and also from the private perspective, and we got to come together and, and do that. But that being said, I, we need no red scare in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. We can't have a hegemon nation like the United States and a superpower like Russia getting into these fights back and forth. We must protect this nation. President-elect Trump is the president of the America, and he has to make that clear, even though I believe he's taken some of the things that Democrats are saying about the hacking and making it personal about his legitimacy. Those are two separate things. For the record, President-elect Donald Trump won the Electoral College, mm -hmm. and my Democratic colleagues need to understand that need to vibe with that, need to feel that, and we need to decide what we're going to do starting this year, 2018, 2019, 2020, going forward to win elections and to win over, to get the power back so that we can push our agenda. Those are the facts. But this is a Dr. King moment, Jake, right here. This is a Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King moment. And he once said that we have to work together as brothers. And I'm going to throw sisters in there. Please do. Bring them in. <laughs> brothers and sisters or perish, you know, together as fools. And this is a moment where we have to come together on the things that Democrats can work with the president-elect with, they should. On the things that they can't, let's have at it. This is politics. Agreed. Here's a, I mean, Sarah said it right. The proof is going to be in the pudding. Donald Trump's going to get a lot of stuff done here. He's going to get much more done than President Obama ever thought of getting done, even tried to get done. Oh, and, no, and one of the reasons I, is, let him, let him make is because point. Donald Trump is not an ideologue. He's not a partisan. He's he's extra partisan. He, I mean, he's a Republican in, in many respects, name only, uh, and <laughs> and and ideologically, he's certainly not an ide an ideological conservative. He's going to go up there and do what he did when he was a businessman. He's going to make deals. You're going to see a lot of things happen, and I th I agree with Sarah 100. percent His popularity is going to grow over time. Look, he's going to have rough edges. It's a coarsening society, and we have a president who reflects that. Surprise. I mean, we, you know, I always said the presidency is a reflection of us. We may not like that reflection sometime, but we need to look in our own mirror 
when we see that. I'm going to take that as your first production, uh, and I want to go down the rest, because do you talked about a lot getting done. I have to change the subject. You had a nice little speech there. <laughs> right there. Uh, that was lovely. I just well, Now let's talk. Let's look, look forward. What do you see happening here on Inauguration Day and moving forward? You can make it about the Democrats if you want. I don't care. But like, what, give us a little prediction. I mean, but do we have to tear down the current president to lift up President-elect Trump? And that's what Senator Santos, that's what he just did. I mean, that we shouldn't do that. And I agree with some of the things that he's saying. The prediction is the president-elect is going to go there. He's going to do his thing. The question about whether or not he's going to read the teleprompter, not read the teleprompter, I think he's going to do a little both. He's going to be a little country, a little rock and roll. <laughs> it would not be like him. If a little he jazz, a little hip-hop. A little jazz, a little hip-hop. It wouldn't be... It wouldn't be, he wouldn't be who he is if he didn't throw in a few believe me's into that, into his, his speech. So, Sarah? Excuse me. Um, <laughs> what are we going to see on inaugural, Inauguration Day and moving forward? So the day after the election, I thought he gave uh, one of his best speeches that he's given. and that the early was on, morning of the yeah, yeah, whatever we're calling, 3 a.m. Um, and I thought that was one of his best speeches, and that was done on very short notice. Uh, Stephen Miller's a talented speechwriter, so I think the speech itself is going to be pretty great. But don't forget that this president understands how to reach the American people in a revolutionary way that we probably haven't seen since Reagan took over television. Um, you know, Clinton with town halls and, and Obama with social media, but that's nothing compared to the Reagan moment and the Trump moment that we're going to see. So I'll tell you what I hope. What I hope is that this idea of making America great becomes a real cause to make a gra America great for everyone mm -hmm. and that everyone is included in the go forward and that there isn't an effort to roll back important gains, particularly when it comes to civil rights. And that Donald Trump will, in fact, nominate a mainstream, moderate uh, Supreme Court justice. Uh, that's my hope. And my hope is also that the rhetoric around an inner city plan is very real. Mm -hmm. And I hold my hand up to say uh, that there's a chance on that issue, I think, Jake, to build a real bipartisan approach to really lift the American economy. Great panel. Thank you so much. Hope it's a wonderful inauguration day for all of you.